Hi, welcome here. Welcome to the pit. Today I'm going to uh, show you guys how to do uh, some bannock over an open fire. Uh, but I'll just kind of show you what I do to make my fire. There's a couple of ways that I was taught. Um, so I'm going to just kind of go through the first part of it. But when I make the fire, I'll be on my own and then we'll... Uh, I'll break to about halfway through when the fire is uh, going pretty good and and then from there then we'll carry on after that but this is just for making fire and this is how I would start so <clears throat> anyway this is my fire pit that I had when I got from my family for Father's Day last year and um, this is some wood that was <laughs> that's been burning I'll add that to it when it's going good I just had a fire in here the other day and really enjoyed it. Oh, and then this is just where I make my tea over it. So anyway, there was a couple of ways I was I was showing how to make a fire. So you'd put your fire starter there, whatever you have, like paper, twigs, grass, dry, uh, small dry twigs. And then you would build a, uh, <clears throat> a teepee type fire over it. So you would get some nice uh, kindling and just kind of build it over over top your fire. You could rest on your, I'm just kind of doing it on my own, but you would rest your fire, uh, your wood on your, um, onto your fire kindling or your fire uh, starter. And then from there you would just build up more wood as you went along, smaller pieces of wood and then start your fire and then from there your fire will burn and then another way that I was shown was and this is how I make my fires now is I'll have my little bit of firewood there I'll put a piece of wood down here another piece here and then my fire kindling there and then from here I would just build up my fire like this and you'd want pieces like this where there's little pieces poking off to be down or towards the fire that way when the fire is going it'll catch those this one's a little bit or this one might be a little bit too big so put this size down and what the, I think what that does is it just draws the fire up so if you want to stand up and see inside there put it in that you can see that hole in the fire there then that'll just draw the air in from all over and that's how your fire will start and just kind of build up it also builds your fire up faster than well i think than the teepee style so that's how i'm going to make my fire and then i'll come back later and show you guys how it's burning thank you all right welcome back um as you can see the fire is going pretty good and uh, it's it's been stacked like two this way two that way for about one two three four five pieces high some of it is already burning down a bit so that it is falling but we'll let it burn down we'll let it uh, get into coal so that it's all over the bottom so that when I do put my bannock pan on that I can move it around so that it's not getting too hot or too cool in one spot but uh, next time I'll come back to you we'll show you the coals and then how we're gonna put the bannock on or I might just cut to where I'm starting to make the bannock inside okay thank you hi again everybody so i just wanted to show my um my fire pit here the one that i had gotten for father's day um and you know what i've i really enjoyed it i like making uh sitting around the fire um we used it over the summer once or twice but then just this winter i think i've used it quite a lot uh more for just for sitting around and uh enjoying the company of others if you've got a fire pit you can enjoy it you could uh, have people around but you know what with COVID around too it's uh, uh the restrictions they've lifted a little bit so you could have a little bit more people outside so i've got like a one two three four extra chairs i could probably fit a couple more in here but i think i'm only allowed five outside but if my family's out here too we could have a little bit more <clears throat> so i just want to talk about this tripod as well this tripod i got made by a friend of mine um my wife's cousin's uh son He's quite a good welder, so he's made this tripod. It used to be the legs from a um, a shelter that I had, uh, somewhat like this one, but it only had four corners. So when it a big windstorm took off the cover of it, we just refurbished the legs, and he made a little uh, 
mechanism here at top. One, so you can put the three legs in and they swivel so you can in and out. And that thing over there, that's my uh, screen that I use on top of my fire pit. And there's three tabs on it. You can see one at the top there and there's one on each end of it. And those would fit into these. And right now it's kind of holding it open, holding the, the tripod at a certain width so that um, they can't kind of go apart. And these handles here, just kind of up and down so these legs could telescope in and out. And then that will be traveling with me over the summer and that'll be over my fire pit wherever I'm camping. I'll use it for uh, cooking, but I'll, I'll just use it just to have it sitting there. It looks nice sitting around it. And this I can hang my uh, cooking pot from or my teapot, which you saw hanging here, but I've got it inside now. Uh, I'm going to hang some tea, hang my teapot from there and then we're going to have some tea later on as well. I have a friend coming over who uh, really likes to sit around the fire and she's really good at making bannock as well. Um, but I'm going to kind of do it on the fire pit here. So she's going to just come over and keep us company. And like I said, it's great to have company around the fire pit. Um, it's kind of a um, therapy as well. I don't mind just sitting here, just sitting by the fire. Hi, welcome back. This is the bannock portion of the program. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to cook it on my um, on my cast iron here. So it's not really open, open fire, but this will be. So I've kind of heated up the pan. I just put it on medium. And I'm just going to um, oil my cast iron. I'm just using a paper towel just to get the oil around it. So there we go. I'll just turn it off and it'll just sit there. Residual heat from the stove and now we're gonna go. We're gonna make the bannock. So what I'll do is I'm gonna put in four cups of flour into here. It's kind of just basically what I'm not really measuring as you can see. But it's basically about four. And in here, I consider this a tablespoon, so I'll put in, there's only four ingredients I have in my bannock. One of them's water. One, two, three, four, five, five ingredients. So probably about every two cups of, uh, about every two cups of flour I would put in, that's me. This is my bannock, so I'll put in about two tablespoons of uh, baking powder. I'll put in a, a two finger pinch of salt. And oil. Sorry, I put my oil off my oil by the stove. And I use about a quarter of a... Uh... Oh, hold on, sorry about that people. I forgot, I mix it all up. And I just go to the edge of the bowl and bring it into the middle. And then give it a couple of stirs just so it's kind of mixed in. And then with the same spoon, just kind of bring the flour up to make a well. You want to make a little bowl with the flour so it's down there. So flour, baking powder, a bit of salt. I'll add about a quarter cup of oil at the bottom. And you need oil. If I was frying it, then I wouldn't use oil. I'll use oil in a frying pan. And that's another show I'll make it. And then I just add water. I think that might be enough. So now let's put a little bit more because it's always never enough. And then I just kind of start stirring from the bottom. And if I see a little big chunks of uh, flour coming up. I just like to, um, I'll use a spoon and just break them up. <clears throat> oh, and I did wash my hands before I, after I came in from outside. Just in case if you're wondering. 
and I usually don't usually don't have a hairnet or a uh, uh, apron when I'm inside cooking for the family but if I was cooking for anybody else I'd have a hairnet in a uh, and an apron on so see as you can see as if you keep working it 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 stays uh, it gets smooth there's little chunks in there right now but and who knows I may have to add more flour but it doesn't matter if you need to add more flour just not a whole lot because the bacon powder is already incorporated into the flour and if you add more um, if you've added too much water way too much then you need to add more bacon powder with your flour but it doesn't look like I'm gonna have to add too much more and then I just use a bit of the dry flour from the edges just on the edge of the spoon just so when I go with that it falls off of my fingers easier and now I start using my my fingers and I just I'll, I'll leave them open a bit so when I bring it up I'm not just bringing up clumps of flour and you are going to get flour and um, flour or the dough the wet dough on your fingers but as you keep working it from the bottom up just bring it up and put it in the middle like that and that's how I would make my my bannock And yeah, I did use a little bit too much. So what I would do is get a cup of flour and then just pour some there. Just kind of around. And like I said, I don't have to use a baking powder with it because it's in the other flour. And this is just your regular Robin Hood enriched flour I guess so as you can see it's, it's coming together all right so it's just it looks kind of um, kind of drying out or something right now so what I want to do is a little bit more flour on my fingers that way I could get all that wet stuff off I'm going to just use two hands and then just the same way my two fingers are my fingers are kind of spread apart I bring it in and then I push it in with my fingers and as you can see it's it's getting dry because it's not really sticking to this side of my fingers this side it is but it'll eventually quit sticking all over and you don't want to be doing this uh a long time because it's not a um the, the the flour will get tough and when you make your bannock it'll come out uh i know very it'll come out dense so there just just a few like that and look how the bottom looks of it nice and uh smooth and if you do this you could get all the the dry the wet flour off your hands and it'll just fall in there and as you can see doing like that you see any flour there's not a whole lot of flour that's wasted you're using it all for your uh, bannock and this is basically how i would make it for inside the house too so this would just go onto a baking pan i would smooth it out and people like to use a fork and make holes with it i don't do that i just like to leave my bannock as is like this and when it'll rise, it'll rise as high as it wants to, to rise too. So with that done, let's go back to the pan now. Oh, get back this way. Okay, so we're just at the pan that I had on the on the stove, just heated it up a little bit, uh, put the oil around, and now I'm just gonna drop the bannock in there. Just like that. And then I'm just gonna Move it around the, the pan like this. There's a different way of doing it if I was making it on a, on a baking sheet in the oven. And I'm gonna do another uh, little video of that again, maybe this evening and try to maybe add it to this video. So I just, all the way out to the edge. But this one's going on the fire, so. And it does puff up, so what I would do is I would 
I would go like this. See how I'm going along the edge and it's it's making a rim? Kind of like a deep dish pizza, but maybe I could add stuff on it. But anyway, that is the, the flour. And like I said, I don't poke holes in it. I'm just gonna let it go like that onto the open fire and then I'll show you from the fire in the next video. I'll open up at the fire. Hi, right, welcome back to the pit. <laughs> so now we made our bannock inside and I'm just gonna put it over the fire now. So it's been burnt down enough and I'm just gonna put my uh, my cast iron frying pan anywhere on there. And usually I'd hang my tea from here, but since I have this rack down, I'm just gonna let it sit in, on the rack so I'll have some tea afterwards as well. Um, but this will take about 15 minutes, up to 20 minutes, and I'll be checking it throughout. And I do like it a little bit dark on the bottom because it just brings out a nice flavor. <clears throat> some might call it burnt. <laughs> But I like to call it flavor, so we'll, um, when I'm ready to flip it, I'll show you what color I mean, or how dark I like it. And then I'll flip it, and then we'll stop it again, and then we'll open it up again at, uh, when the bandage is done. Okay? Thank you. Hello again. So I just wanted to show you, um, the bannock when it's getting a bit more heat on it. See how it's kind of puffed out? It's puffing up. I'll check it in about maybe three minutes. I'll lift it up and then I'll show you the bottom of it. And then we'll go from there. I'll let me know if I need to uh, turn it over or leave it on for a little while longer. All right, well, I'm gonna try flipping the bannock or making sure, and you see it's not gonna stick. But let's see how it looks in the bottom. Can you see? Yeah. Well, it's, it's brown. It looks like it would be good if it was in the oven, but you know what? We're gonna leave it on there for about maybe five more minutes so that it turns dark. So I will, uh, I'll be on again in a little while. And I think the bannock is, could you see it? Is it dark? So I kinda like it like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip it over now. So I have a, um, a wooden board here. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I haven't done this part before, so. Might need a rag. Pass me that rag. Hold on. There we go. That doesn't work. You see that? <laughs> well, I just needed something to help me hold on to the handle. So I'm gonna flip it over. So that's how the bannock looks. And I'm gonna just put it back into here. And I'll let it cook for another 15 minutes. Whew, put my cutting board over there. All right, the conclusion of the show. So that's how the bannock was when I turned it over. And now we're gonna just kind of show how it looks after about 15 minutes more on the on the pan. So that's how it looks. Nice bannock, nice outdoor bannock that we're gonna enjoy in a little bit with some tea. So what I would do is, I don't have another rag, so I'm just gonna lift it up like this and put it on this cooking thing there. It'll cool off for a little bit there until we're ready to handle it and take it inside. But that's the bannock that's cooking over an open fire. Um, and then I'll also be doing a um, a couple of shows of uh, baking bannock, uh, how to put raisins into your um, into your bannock. So we're gonna make raisin bannock and how to incorporate. Maybe you wanna make cheese and uh, cheese and garlic, cheese and onion. But I'll show you how to do those on a different uh, show. Thank you very much. So today now we're the bannocks inside. We're gonna enjoy it with some raspberry jam, some margarine, and this is the bannock. So I'm gonna just kind of break it open. Oh, look at that. Looks beautiful. But anyway, that's our uh, outdoor bannock. Enjoy.